All right, good morning, everybody. We, we now have a quorum, so we're going to go ahead and call the uh, September 12th council meeting in order. First item on the agenda today is the approval of the minutes from our August 1st meeting. I one addendum that came in over the weekend from what you received last week is uh, Taylor Cooper was absent. That's his name on text. So that's going to happen. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Oh, I move that we approve the minutes. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. So, Lindsay, I'm going to hand the second item on our agenda over to you for introduction. Um, before I make an introduction, just an FYI to the group that today's meeting is officially being recorded. Um, as my office sorts out how to do all the things, uh, we are now fully recording this meeting because I'll be posted to the city's website accordingly. So, this is your warning. Um, or advice. Uh, so, Good advice you want to listen to. <laughs> um, these meetings are obviously public and open to the public, uh, but because so much of it is internal processes, the public is not always super engaged. As an FYI. Uh, but Jana Irwin uh, has graciously joined our team uh, as our new public art manager that we've been in the process of recruiting for a couple months. So we're really excited to have Jana on board. Uh, she started last week at the ground running and for some reason is keeps coming back every day, so we're <laughs> hoping to keep it that way. Well, Jana, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Um, as Lindsay said, I'm Jana Irwin, and uh, I've come uh, to uh, arts and culture from a museum background, um, uh, formerly with the Old Museum of Art at WSU. Um, before that, uh, Shaw Center for the Arts, and Activities such as that. So I'm excited to get started. It's been a busy first week and there's a lot to get excited about. It. So please be here. Welcome. You have plenty of you have plenty of opportunity. I know that. So the next item. Next item on our agenda um, is the Chris Church's board for excellence. Lindsay had sent out to all council members of an eligible project that they consider the church's award. Uh, the first, I'll tell you, we don't have to have a project annually for the Chris Church's award if we don't feel there is a project that qualifies. I'm not suggesting that at all from this list. I'm just making sure I'm clear to everybody that it's not a requirement. I want either options on this list that would apply. Chris Churches, when he first brought aesthetic improvements uh, to public projects in the city, was always like, would show up at design council meetings, would say, I want you to wow me. Wow me with something. Come up with something special, something that I'm expecting. That's what we're looking for. So, using his words, uh, I'll suggest that to design council members as you look through there. We may have a short discussion on these, or you may make a recommendation of what you think should be on there and where this shakes out. A lot of options. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know how to skip this. Maybe so we decide by. Yeah. <laughs> we will walk out of the room with an answer. <clears throat> we don't have to, but we're going to stress the staff. If we don't walk out of the room with an answer today. So I think there's plenty of projects here that are Serving of the award, I, I'll because there's so many. I'm going to just jump throughout that I think were outstanding. 
overview of the conversation. Okay. Just to move. He's yeah. Kellogg uh, and Harry Street. They were both are, are, are really well done and very well integrated uh, pieces of public work or public art within public works project. Disagree with any of that. Yes, ma'am. And what you nominate? Uh, I just brought. Well, I think they're all kind of eligible, but I I brought to the surface East Kellogg and uh, Harry Street Bridge. So two and three on your list. In the stadium, we're doing each individual piece. So we had, and I. Apologize, I didn't go into that. We can. So we could take the stadium as a whole. We could pick one or several specific items. And so we broke it out intentionally in case you felt there was a specific piece that just served that wow factor and wanted to acknowledge it above and beyond the whole. We've done the same thing on the pools. We listed the swimming pools individually. Yes, Susan. I would nominate the Jackie Robinson Pavilion. Um, the life size Jackie Robinson was done by John Parsons, and unfortunately, he passed away from COVID, COVID this last year. Um, he also to Jackie Robinson's wife or family, I don't know exactly which, about did they like it and what he should change, kind of thing. So there's some uh, real life stuff in there. And the one thing they wanted him to change is they wanted him to smile for his statue. Thank you. So to spur a long conversation, Steve, you have any you want to recommend or? I, you know, personally, I was looking at this list. I, I think Riverfront's a great one, but I think honestly, the one that pops out in these is Napster. I think you, know, you look at a product that's kind of energized a portion of our town that otherwise it's kind of left by the wayside at some points. So, I mean, I, I, it's done a great job of that. Brought a lot of people, a lot of foot traffic to that area. And it's just a great product. Matt? I actually concur with Steve, and I know that's hard to believe. So, but yeah, Nasca Park, I would say, was a, you know, a blighted part of the downtown, and it's changed. Um, there's events there. There's events outside of Wichita. Tournament, and we're having events there all the time. So I think it's a good one to be recognized. Um, so I would have maybe gone with Riverfront if we would have been able to group them together as a large piece of art just because there's so much there, but I don't know if any one piece maybe is like as outstanding as the big projects like the park or the Kellogg. I was tending to think Kellogg until they started talking about how the park kind of, you know, is gathering people. We've talked about it in here before how we thought the park was kind of plain, but maybe it's, and I'm not entirely clear, are we picking just based on the art itself, or like we've done it before, and I just can't remember. Yeah. We're looking for um, overall project, not a specific, not just the art, but the integration of the art, or just trying to one that kind of fulfills the entire role of what the design council is trying to achieve. Is my answer. I kind of tend to go with Kellogg because we talked about it last time. It just it's a lot different than anything we've had. I like that project. Thank you. Greg? My tendency is towards East Kellogg. I just think uh, as simple as, as it seems to be, it's pretty complicated and pretty uh, interesting. Maybe that I drive it every day, so I appreciate it every day. But uh, uh, I 
like that. I think what I mean, if uh, NAFSCAR, uh, I think it's an interesting argument, but I don't know. Uh, I, I think reflect back to it, and I don't know that we had a whole lot of input into that. I don't know if that matters in and of itself. It was, um, but uh, but I, I'd probably go East Kellogg or uh, the stadium is interesting, but I think it's interesting as a group, not not as individuals. And that's maybe true on the pools as well. So on an individual basis, I kind of lean towards East Kellogg. Okay. Um, I would, for those that are new, I'll tell you, and for those that were here a year ago, I'll remind you, we, East Kellogg was eating last year. And East Kellogg is the one I'm picking multiple reasons. Um, and then last year we decided, you know, we're completely done. We're like, not done yet. Let's wait till let's wait till it's done. And the other thing I want to point out to all members, not only for now but for future years, there's not a hard written rule, but three years is the unwritten thing that we use that we can go back. Four years. The written rule, or am I wrong? Well, the copy at the top of this list from the Arts Council's definition of the word, but it's, I don't think it's a hard rule. Yeah, I don't know. So, any project, you know, for the next four years, anything on this list can still be eligible. Come back and talk about it. So, if we were looking at NASCAR or we were looking at Jackie Robinson, Perry Street, those are all, but all, whichever one we don't pick today would be eligible to be on the list. So, from my straw poll, I have four people that mentioned East Kellogg, one person on Harry Street, two on NASCAR Park, and one on Jackie. Any discussion on where we're at with that straw poll? I know you want this today. Is but we're missing quite a few people. Not to belabor this, but Ella might not vote since she's on. She's on the Jackie Robinson. Yeah, Armando's on the half. Of the yeah, board. so they might not vote anyway. I presume many of you have lots of these projects. Remember last year, she she didn't vote because she was on. Ninth Street. She was the yeah, right. on that project. Yes, <laughs> she chose not to vote, which I understand. Because it's not far. I mean, to me, it's not decisive. I mean, yeah, there's a few. You know, if we threw those three, three. Ask her, Kellogg, Jack Robinson, right? Yeah. Um, we gave him a day to respond. I can put a vote. Well, it didn't tie. <laughs> well, could we narrow it to those four we can make a show? I think that's what Jeff's saying. Or if it's limited to narrow it down to those four, and if we had not who, but the quantity. So NASCAR, Kellogg, Jackie Robinson. Oh, you can pull Harry. I'm I'm good with Kellogg. The stadium in there as a whole. So just those three: Napster, Kellogg, East Kellogg, Jack. Yeah. yeah, let's try to keep this simple as possible. And then an Evo today. One for everyone. We'll answer back when. Oh, by the end of the week. That's oh yeah. Take your pick. If you want Wednesday, take it. If you want Friday, take it. I have absolutely no problem with that, but they were all invited to be here. Yeah. <laughs> and again, if it was like the majority, you know, like all of us, we would want one. About it. I hear you. I don't disagree. It is an important topic. I want to make sure. From here, I'm going to 
share uh, send out an email. I'll notify everyone of uh, votes and then we'll ratify it at the sign. And the art awards themselves are November 3rd at the Wichita Art Museum. Uh, so keep your eyes open. Very good. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda today, which is temporary modifications to the Dudley Avenue bronze sculptures. Camera here today. Lindsay, do you want to keep us or you know, just need to turn it over to Tamara? I can kind of take the lead, and Tamara is here to talk about the project a little more as you need more information. Essentially, we want to make sure any modifications, accessioning, deaccessioning to our public art collection uh, goes through this body for approval. Uh, the staff recommendation would be to approve this project if it's temporary and there wouldn't be any short or long term to the sculptures themselves. I believe we've had garden bombing in this area before, but just as a courtesy, we want to make sure that we always go through the formal approval process. Um, it's down later on the agenda, but our art conservator is actually in town right now waxing all the bronzes. So that was more time sensitive to make sure that the current waxing that's literally going on this week uh, isn't compromised with any adjustments uh, for this project. Uh, but that's kind of, uh, from, from staff's perspective, just making sure that we're taking care of our collection. Uh, now, any major modifications would perhaps need more consideration, uh, but for this one, I think it's pretty straightforward. Tamara is here. If you'd like to talk a little bit about the project at all, you're welcome to, uh, but not necessarily mandatory. And we can pull up images of her past work as we did, although it's in your packet as well. Um, I, I'm going uh, to. Tam, if you don't mind, I'm going to scoot you up here. You can use the podium or you can just stand here. Either one's good. I have been, I was born and raised in Wichita, and I've always driven by the bronze statues. I have such respect for them. But I am also an artist, a crochet artist, that likes to add a little bit of crochet to stuff. So um, I had thought that he, the businessman on the corner needed a hat and some bright colored yarn. And I've made a pair of overalls for him with a bib and um, they just slip over his head and then I'll sew the crotch together and um, then easily <clears throat> it off. And I don't want to leave it on there any length of time. I just want to do it for a couple weeks if that's possible. And I know the hats will probably be um, and I'm aware of that, and I'm okay with that. Because if somebody needs a hat, I'm open to that. I love it. I'm also the president of Crochet Guild in Wichita, and we do charity work all the time, and we donate hats, scarves, afghans, and all that stuff. But I do have an example of what the pieces are. We have some pictures. And I've also done this in Lensport, um, decorating trees and a bicycle. And this is in Lensport. But I don't leave it up. A yarn bombing is the um, definition of that would be to leave it up until it just falls off. I don't do that because I don't like to let my artwork disintegrate or take up space. I've made hats for all of the statues, even the little kids, and um, the, the little kitty cat has a hat too. Do I get to send you a picture of it? Okay. That's my intentions, and I would wouldn't mind um, getting it put up. That the, they're waxing the statues. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to get it up for Sunday, the open street, bring more attention to the downtown area, make it brighter. 
anyway. When you say, I know I agree with you, the hats may not be there long on the overall. Yeah. The overall. Couple weeks. Yeah, just a couple. Is weeks. it a one-time thing? Or yes. Gonna... Yeah, and then throughout the year, I wouldn't mind changing it. You know, like putting all the hats in the fall, and just putting the hats on them, and then maybe a winter time hat and maybe a scarf. On. And I've named him Walter, the businessman. So yeah. Design Council? He's fine. I don't know about, I don't know if it would hurt the statue. Does it hurt the statue in any way? No, I don't do anything that has any vibration or anything. I have a blunt end needle that I may, but most of it, it's just like the seam of the, the overalls. And it will be, all I have to do is pull on it. And I'm the only one that knows where it's going to be pulled to take it off. So I don't think anybody will take those off. And you don't see any issues long, uh, we long just term know, effect on the bronze. He's going to get back to us if there were any immediate concerns. And if approved, we will coordinate with you okay. on uh, the exact timeline. If this weekend would be available or not. Uh, okay. There are no immediate concerns. The control has impact. When these considerations come to the council, maybe staff's initial recommendations are any damages to the artwork itself, and then does it impact the original intent of the design of the piece? Knowing that this is temporal, it's not a long-term modification. Oh, and I don't intend to put anything on Carrie Nation because I heard that she doesn't, you know, she has a background of black, she wore black. I don't want to, you know, do any damage uh, to oh, her. Yeah. That's hard to believe. <laughs> Susan. Carrie Nation had a lot of personality than, than we know. And so, I don't know, I think she had a, she wasn't just humorless, you know. Sure. But I know that she didn't wear color, so I didn't want to. Well, this guy gets hats and scarves. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know. Yes. I haven't seen any payment. Yeah. Was harmed by a stocking cap or a scarf, and yeah, they disappeared. But I think that's the intent when people put it on. Is that sure? If it brings them joy, that would be it's got my heart happy. So I like it. All right, any conversation or motion? Thank you. May I do approve? Well, no. You did say, Susan. Thank you. All right. So we have a motion to approve in a second. Any conversation on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This is unanimously. So, as may arise, do we have something on as may arise? Yeah. Two items. Well, that's kind of one and the same, but I'm um, just Aware, especially with uh, Jana's recent employment, uh, part of her big project list of things to figure out are, is our public art collection management system, uh, or lack thereof. So we've got a lot of impending partnerships with the uh, city's GIS team to have a robust public art map created for internal maintenance purposes, but also externally so that the community knows what we have, where it is. Um, and as we're growing our collection with our person for our program, we want to make sure that we're accurately tracking our, our collection that we know when things are under maintenance, when things are under potentially deaccessioning or modification. We want people to track that accurately. And then simultaneously, we have a five year contract with Past Matters, who's our conservationist uh, out of Boston, um, excuse me, out of Baltimore. She's in town right now for a couple of weeks um, doing just general maintenance, including what we see in the bronzes and a couple other assessments. Uh, she comes out typically once a year. With the pandemic, the last couple of years have kind of been on hiatus. Usually it's one year to do an assessment where she goes and sees every single piece in the collection and does just a general uh, condition assessment or suggestion of maintenance. And then the following year, she comes back and provides minimal. 
Uh, we had a handful of pieces that were identified in her 2019 um, condition assessment that need some love and need some attention. So we're trying to make a robust plan uh, to actually have some action on that. Uh, of note, we've got a couple major projects that we hope to tackle in the 23 year. Uh, first would be the Friendship Totem Pole outside of the Indian Museum. Um, that that pole has uh, received a lot of deterioration. So we're looking at a potential full restoration plan. Uh, we're very early in that process. We've not received a updated data. Uh, updated assessment from the conservator, but we anticipate that that one will likely need to be pulled and will need a full restoration plan. The other one is the, the Vanessa Bridge. I feel like I butcher it every time I say it, uh, but that, that bridge over on 13th Street here at North High School uh, is, a, is a big question mark. The North High? Yeah, okay, you made a question mark face. Uh, that project is uh, needs uh, some attention, both from our artistic standpoint perhaps from a structural standpoint. Um, I'm not quite sure structurally, I believe the bridge is fine, but the structure of the actual mm -hmm. art components um, is what we're looking at. And I know that there's been some cleanup over there. Gary, if you have anything to add on that. Uh, yeah, we were able to park and our stormwater groups just recently were able to clean up a lot of the vegetation around the abutments, especially on the west side. There was a lot of um, debris in the river. Uh, it's causing some concerns with the piers. All of that is out of there now. There's uh, so Scott, I know you're working with Scott Waddle's group and Christina and historic preservation, trying to find budgeting. And, and I think we've got <clears throat> our facilities group has kind of uh, got has formed a working group now to look at the future of Vanessa and how some of that might be funded because we don't have any specific funding set aside but that's a pretty unique bridge uh compared to most of the gods so I th there's more to come uh there is some concern on the part of others that there are structural issues with the bridge that we do not find um there, it depends on what you want to call it i guess there's concerns with some of the aesthetic enhancements and the part of light and all that but it's really not an actual bridge structural issue but there, but there's like I said, we're we're, we're digging in a little bit more uh, and trying to find a better path forward. But we did get some things cleaned up, and it looks a lot better now. So some of that was starting to impact uh, some of the aesthetic parts too. There was considerable vegetation overgrowth in parts of that bridge. It was starting to create some issues. Gary, so that that bridge in particular is a very unique project because so we'll be working with a lot of city departments on on what the future of it looks like, but we know no one needs attention. What happens when that bridge gets tagged? That's where we're struggling right now because we have several tags on it. And that are tagged on several. Several of the busts have some pretty tough damage on it, so our conservator is looking at it right now to kind of make a suggestion for uh, short-term solutions to remove those tags safely, um, and then long-term solutions of uh, pretty, pretty deteriorating. So, so we're all, we're looking forward to receiving those recommendations back so we can start making a action plan along with the historic preservation team, utilities, and kind of the campus tour. Uh, but those are kind of two major projects that we're looking at heading in 2023. Uh, and as as may arise as we do a, a full collection management system, uh, we are looking at partnering with the library as well as GIS on having a robust collection. Uh, management database that the public could access, and then we have the internal access point as well. Um, seen anything? Probably. That's Jana's got her That's work cut out for her uh, on that end. Uh, simultaneously, it's not super exciting, but we are looking at insurance and how we're insuring and insuring our public art collection. Uh, so that's an ongoing dialogue that will likely uh, hit a budget in 2023 that will likely. Uh, be an action item at some point for approval of recommendation or discussion of recommendation next year because we want to make sure that we're not just taking care of it but that we have a plan should catastrophic things happen as we need a deaccession on pieces from our collection uh, we have the opportunity to use them as, as happy to entertain any questions along those lines I maybe have one more uh, just 
as may arise. Tyler's not here today, but he had requested uh, security access for City Hall, so the easier process of entering the building. I'm still working uh, with the security team in the city manager's office to see if that's an option for Design Council, so you would get a badge to uh, ease your entry point to this meeting. That being said, just a friendly reminder that you should be able to get your uh, parking validated if you're not doing that already at the, the front desk here on the first floor. If not, thank you for your contributions. Yeah, did you hear him say, hey, Phil, at the end of that? <laughs> but uh, if, I, if I find out that you're able to get some security badges, um, I'll walk you through the process. I think that's all I have. All right, thank you. Do you design council members have a ask Mayor Rise? I do have one thing, Phil, before you let go, if you don't mind. I know I'm not a design council member. I just didn't want you to wrap up. Mr. Jansen, do you mind? No. And Lindsay, I hope you don't. I was going to come back to East Kellogg real quick. Sure. That's okay. So, <clears throat> a couple of meetings ago, I think, at the time we were uh, uh, talking to everybody about uh, East Kellogg, what's happening on East Kellogg. It's moving forward pretty quick. We're talking 143rd to 100. We're talking about from actually K96. Yeah, to how finally it's 159th. It includes both the interchanges at 143rd and 159th. It includes multiple bridges at K96. Uh, KDOT has a very aggressive schedule. They're going to hire, they're going to design and build the project through a progressive design build, project delivery, like we're doing with our water treatment plant. The goal of having construction completed by the end of 2025. So it's going to move really quick. Yeah, starting to design. Um, <clears throat> we've been working with Kate on some general layout and, and you know, in, in general, it's going to be a six lane freeway, just like you've seen on the rest of Kellogg. Kellogg will go over 143rd, over 159. We talked about this before. Raja came in and presented all that to you, so I don't need to go into detail. Sorry. Anyway, at the, at the end of that meeting, you talked about a desire to express to the city council that you'd like to see aesthetic funding. Uh, for that project, the timing of the approval of the CIP, the structure of how we were set up with our 2% art for our just didn't allow that to happen right then. But in talking to Dante Martin, city manager's office, uh, I had made the recommendation. He agreed that that made the most sense that you take this up again uh, here as we get into the end of this year, the first quarter of next year, and we start talking about the CIP again. I know this year in particular, and I don't want to speak for the manager's office, but you kind of got in a little bit later on the CIP than I think any of us wanted to have that happen from a timing perspective. And the point being, uh, you don't need to let go of that. It's just we decided that the timing works better you to make a formal more formal recommendation for next year's CIP because that timing can still work. Uh, KDOT is doing interviews the first week of October for selection of that progressive design build team. And so it'll be late this year, you know, before they really have an somebody under contract and moving forward. So the first part of next year they'll start getting into design elements. And so I I we think there's still the opportunity. Uh, for this body to make a more formal recommendation to City Council saying in the next CIP, we would like to see some funding for aesthetic elements. We still don't know yet how much KDOT is willing to do that uh, above and beyond some of just the integrated design that they would already do with form liners on the bridge piers and things like that. But it seems to me uh, their first deal is going to be, if it's not their money, they're going to listen a little bit more, right? Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, as long as it's not something that's going to slow the project down too much, I think they're willing they're willing to make that part of the process. So hopefully that was kind of clear. Um, but I think there's still an opportunity, if you're interested, to consider taking that up again. Um, I will tell you one thing that, that Dante Martin mentioned is he said as much clarity as could come from the design council as possible would be good, including if you would like to throw a dollar amount out there. I know it's hard, 
because you don't know all the elements. We don't know all the elements. Uh, but he felt like that would be a lot better place to start. Yeah. No, I hear him. Uh, to say, hey, what, what is this number? Anyway, I, Lindsay, hope that was okay. I just wanted yeah. to mention that, that we didn't quite get to where you had, hope, had hoped. We thought maybe we could get to, but there's still a chance. Thank you yeah, so much. Uh, I got multiple questions. Yes. How, how does that work? Uh, I mean, if KDOT's under contract and then we come afterwards and say, we want to add this and they're in, on that schedule. And, is that that CIP won't be until well until next year? Don't know. This is our best bet. Yeah. There's no perfect answer. I wish I could tell you. It, it, I, we don't know how it works, but it, this is really the only opportunity. It's, it's for it, for you, I think, as a body to still keep that to the forefront. That you want to see a higher level of static enhancements. If you can come up with a number that seems reasonable, I think the best we can do is to help keep that out there. I know there's a lot of shades of gray here. That's not very clear, but there's just not going to be the opportunity otherwise than to try to try to make this work in this manner. I mean, I, we're open to any suggestions. I just think the way the process is going to work, the way KDOT is developing the project and the timing of everything, um, with a progressive design build, they'll have more flexibility to add something in that wasn't there. They don't have any design stuff. They already, you know, they're going to be designing through this whole process. Trying yeah. to decide if they had more flexibility or less. I was thinking they had less flexibility. <laughs> they'd come in and said, this is what we proposed. And now you're asking us to do something different. And I, I don't know that it matters. I get what you're saying, Greg. I, I think it's either this or, or not. Right. I, I just don't think there's going to be any other way of going about this and I don't want to waste your time but I, I didn't feel to me like it'd be a waste of time for you to give it a shot it's just the best we can do right I just didn't know if there's like uh some as they're going through the interview process and selection I mean some encouragement to KDOT that some funding would be coming that way so that that they can start I guess they're going to want to know how much that is or if it is, but uh, right. I, I just didn't know if if at least you interject and say, or the city can interject and say, hey, this, we're expecting something here. The problem is the city can't. Uh, outside of council taking some separate action now, predictive of the next CIP, they just can't. And that's why I think, I know it feels a little flimsy, but. I, I still think it makes sense for the design council to stay on this and say, here's our desires, here's what we'd like to see. And, you know, I, I mean, you do what you want. You know, I think Dante was on to something. It probably doesn't hurt to start with some kind of number. If somebody's got something in mind here, what yeah. this looks like, right? I agree with you. You're looking at two. I mean, otherwise, 13 or, or council is going to pick that number. So we might as well give them a record. Right, or they just won't take any action because they, they don't want to pick the number. <laughs> and I know it's not easy. I get it. I wish I had more to provide you. You know, it's a estimated $225 million project. I think that's going to change uh, for what it's worth. The North Junction, the next phase it's going to bid, it was originally estimated at $86 million, and that's now over 150 on the most current estimate based on inflationary impacts, so I think it's going to grow, but I know you don't have the information either to know what portion of that $225 million is opportunity to you. Uh, yeah, this is off that topic, but water treatment plant, there was an RFQ some months back for art consultant. I never heard what happened with that? If someone selected where they're at with We've uh, we entered a contract with Nine Dot Arts about 90 days ago, two months ago, um, and they're moving process. They've not started an artist selection process. We're still identifying where on the 
facility, uh, our components can be actualized. I think there was initial thoughts in the RFQ or RFP of the sites that were desired. Uh, we're going back and forth with my other various stakeholders because uh, the original sites are not looking as promising as they used to be. Specifically, the fence line near the, the railroad. railroad, Union Pacific has pretty much said it. that's a no-go uh, for site construction lines. So 9.R is, is making recommendations to these internal on <coughs> what the sites could be. Once the sites are identified, uh, then they'll do all the works. I was curious because the tanks are coming out of the ground and And they had some recommendations on if the tanks could have murals attached to them, what would that look like? There's some different sculpture opportunities. So we're really just isolating uh, what the projects could be, and we'll go from there. Gary, do you have anything else on that, or is that? I don't. That I, well, not much. I don't know. So, curious. I can keep the council abreast of that project moves forward. And at minimum, once a call to artist goes out, we definitely want to make sure local artists are in the know of the opportunity. If I can go back to the East Kellogg project, just as an FYI, tomorrow night, uh, KDOT is hoping, hosting an open house meeting uh, at Sunflower Elementary from 4.30 to 6.30. Um, it looks like it's just open house style, so it doesn't look like they're necessarily soliciting feedback, but if you'd like more information, uh, I live in the area, so I know I will be there uh, to know how my neighborhood's impacted. Uh, but the design council is welcome to attend if you want more information specifically about that project. Is it 6 30? Uh, 4 30 to 6 30 tomorrow, the 13th, and it's at Sunflower Elementary School. Um, and I'll send that out. Um, Anna will send it out with send an EVO just as an FYI if you'd like to attend. I would add one more comment to that. Thank you for mentioning that, Lindsay. I will tell you, we never know, and y'all are busy, but I, you know, we've seen times in the past, and you know, right now money's tight and all this, but there's never any harm in KDOT hearing from you at meetings uh, and hearing that there's a desire for more aesthetic, you know. I, there, I think Secretary Lorenz is uh, cut from a different cloth than past KDOT secretaries. It has a desire to listen to communities and understand long-term impacts of infrastructure improvements. And so certainly if you have the opportunity to be at a meeting like that and ask those questions, it never hurts for that to be out there, right? Uh, they're going to respond how they ever respond, but I just don't think there's a lot of harm in that. And even in that regards, uh, I think with the way this body is set up, maybe you want to think at some point in time about sending a formal letter to KDOT. I don't know that, I mean, that's within your prerogative. They may just come back to us and say, where's the city going to come up with the money? But, I, well, but you know what, again, it's, it's, I, I've seen stranger things happen. Uh, it's the same message stays out there, and I think it's an important message. I don't know. I, don't know. I agree. Lindsay, would you, December, January, February, we need to be discussing to bring light to this again beyond the CIP? This landed on the council person. Words. Is the council person supportive and championing this as well? Uh, this would be in Vice Mayor Tunnel's district, and she attended the last requested follow up. Uh, just to make sure she understood the concerns. I don't know the answer, but I know she's aware of our desire. The reason we would want to take Gary's recommendation on a letter to KDOT, or I mean, I, I agree. The more you say something, the better. It seems like there's no harm for laying tracks. I just. No, I'm so I mean we can throw it out for conversation. I have no problem with the letter and think we should. You do that now, do that September, January when we get ready to go back to council. Do you do both? I'm you just send it every month. Every month. Well, that's a, a timing conversation we can have. 
Thanks, well, Susan. It probably didn't hurt to get out ahead of it. Like I said, we're getting ready. To I think doing one now makes sense because they're making a selection of a. I think what's going to happen uh, in the effort to be done by the end of 2025, if that's even practical, the design build team is going to look at ways to start construction early on, like some of the K96 bridges where right of way is not needed. If you can work with an existing right of way, those are the types of things they're going to kick in gear and start and look to start working on while they're designing the rest. And so there's things that will happen. I mean, I don't think anything's going to be under construction probably even by this time next year. I, even, I think that's a stretch, but planning for that will get going really fast. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to give you bad advice here. I just think that it hurt, right? Can't hurt. I think we know the answer, but you don't know until you ask. So yeah, you're not getting our hope. You're not getting my hopes up, but I hear you. It's a good place to start. I'm looking at you or Jana when we talk about a letter. Hello. <laughs> uh, would you like to maybe make a recommendation for a letter or a motion for a letter, and we can draft it and have it uh, add that to the vote? I'd move that we uh, put together a letter to, it would be to ADOT and copy the council uh, with uh, our request to add aesthetic component as early in the process as possible. Very high budget. We don't add that part, but. Add an aesthetic component. To, to the East Kellogg project, uh, it's early in the process in include the design council in that process uh, as they move forward. So, yeah, I'd say leave your motion as vague as you can yeah. now. Leave staff room to adjust yeah, it. I we can require them. Um, yeah, I think that. If here's something I would offer to you to the, the and, and I know you would do this, but it's probably worth talking about what what's happened on East Kellogg at this point without going into huge, but talk about like it to be similar to really cool stuff that's done, okay. you know, up to the point, and trying to, you know, whether it's the same or not, just the fact that there was more than just, you know, basic integrated. Yeah. Yeah. We'll draft something up and right. rip it apart or say <laughs> go for it. That's a motion. Right. Okay. There's a lot of people right. that, so a lot of people that see that K96 interchange every day. A lot of opportunities for, you know, as you know. So we have a motion by Greg, a second by Jeff. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed unanimous. I'm sure you still have a quorum. We still have a quorum. I did that same count a minute ago. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we'll send out a draft letter for uh, approval and then ratify. Okay. Anything else? How about a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Yeah.